Chapter 25 Aurelia The dress that they helped me into was too tight. I could barely breathe through the corset strapped around my torso. How the hell am I going to fight in this? I asked, turning to the men in the room who all stared at me like I was a piece of meat. Stop it. Gray barked, glaring at the others. You're making her nervous. They're making me uncomfortable, not nervous. I stepped into the entryway. Well they need to stop that too, Gray grumbled. You're mine. They need to stop looking at you like that. Gray wrapped his arm around my waist as we all made our way to the parking garage. Zeke, Ash and Dan followed behind us. My mother had glamoured us so everyone we met would see something different, but we still saw each other as we truly were. You remember the plan? Gray asked me as he helped me into the limo. We make plans all the time, but they seem to go to shit every time. I know, but we don't know exactly what we're walking into, so I wanted to make sure. He settled into the seat next to me, and rested his hand over the form-fitting dress on my thigh. I get it. I sat back with a huff. What was I doing? Was I going to get us all killed, thinking that I could take Malcolm out? He deserved it and I wanted nothing more than to end him for the hell he'd put us through. It was more than that though. He was behind the human government imprisoning and testing supernaturals. I would see him dead before this war was over. We arrived at the red carpet, and the guys all piled out of the car before Gray reached a hand out for me to take. My form-fitting emerald dress flared out at the bottom, and my hair was done in an elegant up, do on top of my head. You look beautiful, love, Gray whispered in my ear. You look good yourself, but we aren't here to have fun. I scanned the carpet behind him. I didn't see Malcolm, but that didn't mean he wasn't puppeteering the president. Gray wrapped an arm around my waist and led me through the doors into the ballroom. The entire room was filled with an opulence that I wasn't used to. The other guys fanned out around the room, but they kept their eyes on us as we swept through the area. The president isn't here yet. He will probably be the last to arrive and surrounded by security, Gray muttered. So what do we do then? I asked, sucking my bottom lip into my mouth. We can dance. It will give us a better view of the room, and we can see if we can get eyes on Malcolm. What if he doesn't show up? I asked, worried. Everything hinged on Malcolm being at that gala with the president, but what if he wasn't? What would we do to stop the atrocities happening to the supernaturals? I would have done anything to stop the crazy madness. I couldn't stop anything if Malcolm didn't show up though. Gray twirled me around the dance floor and I scanned the room, but no matter how hard I looked, I didn't see the slimy fucker, Malcolm. The doors to the ballroom opened, and a flood of men in black suits surrounded someone in the middle. The president was there, his wife on his arm in a flowing royal blue gown. She looked elegant and sophisticated. Too bad her husband might have been a world-class asshole. Let's see if we can get close to them, I whispered. No need. Zeke moved around the seating chart online and got us a spot at his table. Gray smirked. Of course he did. That man never does anything halfway. I shook my head. They announced dinner being served, and Gray led me to the table and pulled my chair out for me. I sat down primly next to the first lady and my eyes widened at Gray. Zeke really wasn't playing around when he set this all up. Hello. The first lady nodded to me, before turning back to her husband. This is such a great cause. I'm so pleased to be able to donate, I said loudly. The words tasted like bile on my tongue. It was not a great cause. It was a death sentence for so many of us, but I needed to get the president's attention. I'm glad to meet a fellow American who believes in this amazing cause. The president nodded. Oh yes, I anxiously await the day that we have them all rounded up, Gray said smoothly. Yes, the recent devastating attack on the prison here has set us back slightly, but they will be found and brought to justice for their crimes, the president said. Their crimes. He'd really said that, and I didn't see Malcolm anywhere in the room. 
How far away did the mind control work? Was it the mind control serum, or did the president really believe what he was saying? The extremists say that the prison was set to explode anyway, and that it was just a safe place to round up supernaturals so they could exterminate them, Gray commented. The president's eyes flashed with a warning as he narrowed his eyes at Gray. That's ridiculous. We are just protecting the American people from dangerous beings who shouldn't be here in the first place. And rightly so, I said, glaring at Gray to cool down. He was going to blow our cover if he wasn't careful. We hadn't found Malcolm, and it looked like this whole mission was for nothing anyway, because the president fully believed in his prejudice. What the fuck were we supposed to do now? I locked gazes with Zeke and widened my eyes at him. The president caught on quickly and glanced between me and Zeke. I was the only one really in disguise since I was enemy number one. The president stood up so fast his chair toppled to the ground and he pointed at Zeke and Ash. They are supernatural. They are the ones who blew up the prison. Get them. A hand clamped around my arm and dragged me up out of my seat. I screamed in the Secret Service agent's face before cocking my arm back and punching him. My knuckles cracked against his nose and I shook my hand out. I spun around to find Gray. His body vibrated, his wolf close to the surface. Claws replaced his hands as he stared down the two men approaching him. They were also wearing dark suits, like the Secret Service. If you resist, it will be worse for you, the president announced loudly. It can't get much worse than the council trying to blow us all up, I sneered. That's a lie. The president slammed his fist down on the table. The other people backed away from the spectacle, leaving the five of us alone with the president and his secret service agents. It's not. We were all locked in that hellhole, tested on and tortured. I yelled. I needed the people in that room to hear me, but as I stared into the president's eyes, they were clear. He wasn't being controlled. He actually believed in what he was doing. That was even worse than the alternative. No one would be safe in the mortal world with the human government actually out to get us. Arms wrapped around me from behind, squeezing me like a vice. The man lifted me from my feet, and I kicked back into his shin with my pointy heel. A bellow of rage filled the room as Gray slammed a clawed fist into one of the men before him. My shadows pulsed beneath my skin as my magic writhed. It wanted out. It wanted to protect me from the threat. If I used my magic against them, I would be playing directly into their hands and showing them that we were monsters. That wouldn't help matters at all. All it would do is create more fear. It would cause more chaos. I didn't want to be the reason for that. Shadows swirled over my arms angrily. People gasped and backed away from me. That's her, the woman that blew up the prison, several people whispered. Fuck. The shadows were a dead giveaway. Get her, the president roared. Suddenly, Zeke was in front of me. I hadn't even seen him move. What are you doing? I whispered at his back. You have to be protected. He grunted as magic filled his palms. Zeke, no. We can't use magic against them, or we are exactly what they think we are, I hissed. We are protecting ourselves. That's all we've ever done. It's why we hid for centuries among them. I'm not letting them take you to Rinaldo. You can't use your magic, I growled. Fine. He dropped the magic but didn't move out of my way. I glanced around the room. Gray was fighting against two Secret Service agents, but they were no match for him. He took them down with his fists alone, but his claws punctured his palms and blood dripped from them. We need to go. Right now. Gray bellowed. Zeke backed me up to Gray, and the others created a protective barrier around me as Zeke put up a shield. They couldn't get to us through his ward. Do not let them leave. The president took a step forward. They need to pay for their crimes. Several of the agents pulled guns and pointed them at us. Still, Zeke kept backing us toward the door. They were all protecting me, and I hated it. They needed to protect themselves too, but would it do any good to tell them that? 
A gust of wind blew through the room and pushed the guards back. I peered over at Ash with a raised brow. I said no magic, I growled. The agents lifted their semi-automatics at us. Just surrender and no one gets hurt. We aren't doing anything. We didn't do anything to deserve this treatment in the first place. Just let us go. I shook my head. Don't move, another agent said. He pointed his gun at my head, ready to take me down by any means necessary. If those guns housed Ronaldo's deadly bullets we were all fucked. Zeke's magic flared as he once again stepped in front of me, blocking me from the agents. A loud shot cracked through the air, and arms grabbed me from behind, turning me into a hard chest and spinning me around. I screamed and thrashed in those arms but Gray's warmth soothed me. I peeked around him, just in time to witness Zeke fall to the ground in a puddle of blood. No. Not Zeke. As much as he's pissed me off, I didn't want to lose my friend. I lunged for Zeke and my magic flared even as Gray held me back. I know love, I know. But his sacrifice will be for nothing if we don't leave now. Gray lifted me off my feet and threw me over his shoulder as he raced to the door. The others shot magic at the agents until we were on the other side. Tears poured down my cheeks as we made our way outside into the humid Dallas air. Zeke was gone. I turned to Ash. His face was stricken but determined at the same time. We can mourn him later, Aurelia. We have to go. That's what he would want. My heart broke as we ran. How could we just leave one of our own behind? Dan ran next to me. Live to fight another day, princess. Yeah, live to fight another day. But how many of those did I really have left?